Welcome to Connections. Brian O'Neill on the phone this morning with a doctor from Maine who's done an interesting study on the health effects of wind turbines, Dr. Mike Nissenbaum. And what makes Dr. Nissenbaum so interesting is he did a study on the effects of wind turbines, and it's the exact same company in Maine where he is that uh, has a wind farm in Cohocton. So what Dr. Nissenbaum is talking about, what happened to the people in Maine, is relevant to the people in Steuben County. In fact, maybe even more so because there are more wind turbines in Cohocton than there are at the Mars Hill Project in Maine where Dr. Nissenbaum is. And as I said, it's the same exact wind company. Doctor, good morning and welcome to Connections. Good morning. Dr. Nissenbaum, here's the deal. I'm a reporter, and the other day I was covering a town hall meeting, and a woman at the meeting complained that people were getting migraine headaches in Cohocton since the wind turbines went up there. And after that, I checked with two Cohocton residents, and they told me that their wives are getting headaches in Cohocton. One of them is actually a wind farmer. So, Dr. Nissenbaum, does that surprise you that people are complaining about migraine headaches because of wind turbines? Well, it doesn't surprise me that people are complaining about headaches. Migraines specifically are a subset of headaches. I, I can tell you what I found in, in Mars Hill. Uh, in Mars Hill, uh, there are about uh, 20 homes that uh, exist within 3,500 feet of a ridgeline arrangement of 28 uh, turbines. Uh, I interviewed uh, 15 uh, of the adults, which represents about half the adults uh, living in that area. And uh, all of my findings up to this point are based on that. Uh, I can tell you that uh, of those, uh, headaches, uh, increased uh, headaches occurred in eight out of those 15, which is just over 50%. Uh, in six of those eight, these were entirely new onset headaches. In other words, people who, who never experienced headaches uh, uh, before. And uh, two of those eight uh, uh, described an increased frequency of migraines. Uh, one of those two... Uh, attributed the increased migraine frequency, she felt that the shadow flicker from uh, the turbines would, would bring on her migraine at increased frequency. So that's the story as far as headaches are concerned in those uh, 15 people that I interviewed up to this point. What other symptoms uh, did you discover in your study? Uh, far and away, the major symptom that people uh, uh, complained about was sleep disturbance. And that was present in uh, 14 out of the 15 uh, people who I interviewed. The 15th person, interestingly, was uh, hard of hearing, and that was not uh, an issue uh, for him. Uh, the sleep disturbances ranged from waking up in the middle of the night, and that occurred in, in 87% of the people, to uh, difficulty falling asleep initially, and that occurred in about half the people. And the frequencies uh, where their sleep was disturbed ranged from uh, uh, one or two times per week up to five to seven times uh, per week in about half the people. Doctor, uh, uh, yeah, go uh, ahead. I'll, I'll just add that uh, sleep disturbances, interestingly, can lead over time in a chronic situation to a whole host of uh, other uh, negative health effects, uh, including headaches. Dr. Nissenbaum, what you're telling me is something I have to admit I pretty much ignored in the beginning when I heard about these sicknesses from wind protesters. Now, that was before the turbines went up. The reason being I was so focused on the corruption stories related to wind. You know, I was up to hearing stories about politicians that had conflicts of interest, and I just didn't have time to do any work on wind turbine syndrome stories. But now that the wind turbines are here in Steuben County, the stuff that I'm hearing from wind turbines about wind turbines cause uh, from wind protesters about uh, wind turbines causing medical problems. You know, it, it all seems to be coming true right here in Steuben County. Now, doctor, according to your study, more people who live near wind turbines are turning to prescription drugs because of the symptoms that they're getting from wind turbines. Is is that right? Well, what we found was that. Uh, 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 there were 15 new prescriptions uh, among those 15 people since the wind turbines went up. Uh, there were an additional 10 prescriptions that were offered by medical practitioners that were refused by the people, but uh, 15 were accepted. So uh, we do have uh, an increased use of prescription uh, medications uh, in, that, uh, in that population. So we have 12 new prescriptions and three increased uh, prescriptions. And these prescriptions uh, range from... Uh, from uh, uh, anxiolytics and antidepressants to uh, blood pressure uh, medications. Antidepressants? Why would they be going on antidepressants? Well, uh, there was uh, 
people did complain. I did do a functional inquiry for uh, psychiatric uh, symptomatology, and uh, 11 out of 15 described feelings of stress. 13 out of 15 described anger. Uh, Six uh, described anxiety, four irritability. Hopelessness uh, was described in 11 out of uh, 15 people, or at least bouts of hopelessness. Uh, And uh, 8 out of 15 uh, considered uh, uh, themselves as having episodes of um, depression. And uh, if we look at the medications that were prescribed, it certainly, uh, and these were prescribed uh, by uh, their local practitioners, uh, if we look at the types of medications that were prescribed, uh, it's certainly consistent with that. So uh, there's something about their situation there that also uh, results in a lot of uh, uh, negative psychiatric symptomatology. Doctor, one of the big turning points around here was when Hal Graham stepped forward. Now, Hal Graham is now a well-known name in the wind world because he's a wind farmer who has a wind turbine on his land in Cohocton, and now he spends a lot of time going around and explaining to people who are interested in bringing wind farms to their area the negative effects of wind turbines. Hal says just as it was in your study. He has trouble sleeping in his own home because of the noise, and Hal told me someone he knows has headaches since the wind turbines went up in Cohocton. And just the other day I was reading online, an anonymous wind farmer in Wisconsin was advising people the same thing, not to sign up to have a wind farm on their land because this man says it's a big mistake. I'm guessing that that wind farmer had to write what he did anonymously online because wind farmers from what I understand, are signing gag order leases, uh, gag orders in their leases that don't let them publicly complain if things go wrong. Dr. Nissenbaum, in your study, have you encountered this gag order that wind companies put in their leases where they don't allow people to complain? Well, look, I I, I did not address contractual issues and things like that in the study. I only looked at the... the, uh... Uh, at, at the health issues, I can tell you anecdotally that of the uh, I've seen a couple of contracts, including a contract that is being circulated up in this area where I live, and uh, there is a paragraph in there that can not only be termed as a, as a gag clause, but as a, uh, a clause that that uh, uh, requires the the wind farmer to uh, uh, Actively facilitate uh, the 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 plans of the uh, the wind turbine company. In other words, uh, they can not only not say anything bad; they actually have to write letters and say good things and submit those letters in advance to to the wind company for approval prior to them going out to any official agency. And that's there in black and white in the uh, in the local contract that's being circulated. Wow, that's so a new that, one on me. But that was not a subject. This is just something. Anecdotal that I'm telling you. This is this was this was in no in no way part of uh, my health survey. Sure, sure. You want to stick to the health effects? I understand. We're talking with Dr. Mike Nissenbaum on connections here on AM 1480 WLEA, and in just a moment, we'll continue our conversation about the negative medical effects of wind energy. It's coming up here on AM 1480 WLEA.